Hi everyone, welcome to Sue's Day. I'm Sue Ann Jafarian, the fat woman driving the novel RV. I get asked a lot about food, particularly what I like to cook in the van. But today we're not talking about that. I'll save that for another video, but today we're gonna talk about food I find on my journey. One of the things I love to do as I travel from state to state is research the iconic food of that region and sample it. And that's all you need to do. You go to Google, you type in iconic food of and whatever state you're in, whether it be Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, North Dakota, and up will pop a whole list of foods made famous by that region. And in many cases, restaurants where to buy what the reviewer thinks is the best. I just spent several weeks in North Dakota. North Dakota has the yummy caramel rolls, walleye, which is a favorite fish of mine, and knuffle. I hope I'm saying that right, but basically it's a lumpy dumpling soup in a creamy chicken base. If you go to Texas, there's so many things to, and so many regions to eat there, but you can't go to Texas without a good barbecue. I've eaten at many great barbecue places in Texas. Texas is also quite proud of their chicken fried steak. And I'll tell you, it is on almost every menu. Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota is known for also its walleye and it's known for its wild rice soup. And if you never had wild rice soup, make sure you have it in Minnesota. It's fabulous. And also in Minnesota, they make wild rice bread, sometimes with cranberries in it. That is wonderful. Of course, you have all of New England, whether you're in Maine, New Hampshire, or Massachusetts, that's known for its lobster, scallops, and clams. And, you know, when you get down into the Gulf area, you've got shrimp, hush puppies, uh, catfish, all along that area, the seafood is incredible. And of course you can't go to Southern Florida, particularly the Keys, without key lime pie. When you're in Washington, especially certain times of the year, don't forget to try the halibut. Oregon also. The whole Northwest is big on halibut at certain times of the year and it is wonderful, as are the cherries. And if you're in Washington, check out the different types of apples. The first time I walked into a local grocery store and saw how many different apples that were there, it just blew my mind. So if you go to a, say a farm store or a local market, check out the apples and don't be afraid to try some new types. This, this country is just so rich in food. It doesn't matter whether you're eating Indian tacos in New Mexico, Tex-Mex in Texas, Northern, Me oh, and let's, uh, let's talk about Mexican food. If you're in New Mexico, you're gonna get a different kind of Mexican food than if you're in Texas. If you're in Arizona and California, you're gonna get another different type of Mexican food. It's all similar, but it's different. So don't be shy about trying them. I had my first Indian taco in Williams, Arizona. Been a big fan since. In addition to searching for the iconic foods of an area, um, don't be shy about trying the different beverages of the area. There are a lot of breweries, distilleries, wineries, even meteries all throughout this country. One of my favorite things to do is to stop at one of these places for the night if they're a Harvest Host member. I'm not real fond of sampling wine and other adult beverages and then getting behind the wheel of my van. So if I stay at a Harvest Host that happens to be uh, a distillery or brewery or a winery, then I like to order a flight of wine so I can sample what they make. One of my favorites was down in Louisiana. 
I believe it was called Bayou Tech, and it's a brewery. And if you go on the weekend, you will be treated to live Zydeco music and pizza. It was also the first place I smoked my one and only cigar. So this country is rich in history and it's rich in food. And that's one of the greatest things when you travel is to try out all those foods. In 2020, I traveled through Iowa and I tackled the Iowa Pork Tenderloin Trail. Yes, that's a real thing. It's sponsored by the Iowa Pork Growers Association. And it is a trail that you drive around to different restaurants that they, you know, they have a, a map and you drive to these different restaurants and try the different pork tenderloins. And then you get a passport and it gets stamped. You mail that in, they send you a t-shirt. Well, a pork tenderloin, for those of you who aren't familiar with the pork tenderloin sandwich, it's a flattened piece of pork that has been breaded and deep fried. It is heaven on a bun. It's also extremely large. Uh, if you decide to do this, plan on taking a lot of leftovers home. I will put the um, link to the article I wrote for Winnebago on the Pork Tenderloin Trail in the comments section so you can look it up. That was a lot of fun, but I didn't want to see pork for a long, long time after. I ate 10 pork tenderloin sandwiches in like two weeks. Anyway, a lot of states also have trails, not just the pork tenderloin trail, but in Texas, there's a barbecue trail. When you get into the Kentucky area, there's the bourbon trail. There are various ice cream trails, pie trails, and in Butler County, Ohio, there is the donut trail. So whatever your favorite food is, you will be able to find it across the United States and sample it. Besides Googling iconic foods, Google the best blank in each state, the best pie in each state, the best ice cream in each state, and it will come up. There are articles that have been written saying every state and where to find the best pie or the best burger or the best whatever. So don't be shy about checking out your favorite foods when you travel. So that's it for today. And I wanna thank you for watching this video and please come back next Tuesday. And if you like this video, please subscribe. You all have a good day and enjoy your meals.